Belgian for this 48th edition. We took the chance before the off to have a word with some of the main runners. Alex Bergstahler driving for Bugatti BMW and Roberto Rivalia also driving for Bugatti BMW here in this 48th edition. Factory teams from BMW, Opel, Honda and Audi as we talk to Rivalia. I mean, 24 hours is a long race, and uh, I think uh, I will do speed that I think will be good for 24 hours, and the other, if they want to be quicker, it's not a problem. Driving for Schnitzer BMW, Joe Winklehock, the 93 British Touring Car Champion. Man who's never won here. This weekend, race weekend here in Spa, there are a lot of good drivers, a lot of uh, competitive cars, so I think it's not so easy. Especially for me to do the start because I'm lazy. I don't like to do the start. So at the beginning, I think it will be a very quick race, very fast. There's two Audi Quattros here from the factory, one of them given to Philippe Adams. Well, we've had a chance, I think, of doing well here. We're right up at the front of the field. We're third, fourth fastest on the second row of the grid. So I think if we can get a good start, a good lead, we have every chance. It's a good four-wheel drive circuit here at Spa. And Eric van der Poel also here. He's driving for Opel instead of his normal Nissan contract just for this weekend. Well, I've had a lot of experience here, he said, I had a big fight with uh, Steve Soper in 92, it's a race I've always loved and uh, I wanted to come back here, Nissan released me from my uh, contract just for this one weekend. I hope we're going to get a podium finish, we'd like to see that. Also here, very unusually, a Peugeot 806, Eric Bachelard. Normally seen racing in Indy cars. Well, it's something different, he said. We put this 806 uh, people carrier together just to be different. It's very effective. We have uh, a lot of power, 260 horsepower. And it's a great chassis, I think. Anyway, it's going to be fun. Well, Terry Tassan is a man who's won this race in the past, and Tassan is driving. This weekend for the Schnitzer BMW team, let's take a lap around Spa with Tassan. Well, the four BMWs in all from the factory, two of them from Schnitzer, the first for Winkelhock, Steve Soper and Dutchman Peter Cox. The second one is this car, Terry Tassan, teamed up with Georg Muller from Germany and Antonio Albacetti from Spain, all three of whom are contenders for their national saloon car championships. Bugatti BMW stays with Nelson Piquet, Mark Duez and Roberto Lavalia and the other car of Alex Bergstahler, Ingo Hoffman and French championship leader Ivan Muller. That's for BMW. Opel's here in fourth of two Vectras for the Snowbeck team. Honda has one accord here. Didier de Rodriguez, the former bike racer, rally driver Patrick Snyers and Switzerland's Philippe Favre on board. And the Audis, we just heard Philippe Adams telling us he'll be driving on with Vincent Vosse and the South African Terry Moss, while the second car is given to Germans Wolfgang Haug and Christian Abdeman, we see in German Formula 3, and to Belgium's Georges Kramer. So a massive entry, 47 cars are going to be starting this edition of the Spa 24 Hours, a race which has given a great deal of excitement over the years as we continue with Tassan, just watching the kilometres there, not miles per hour, around this beautiful circuit in southern Belgium. 6.97 kilometres, or 4.31 miles, it's the longest Formula One track it was built in 1924 in its original form. And of course, it's just getting ready now for the German Grand Prix, which comes, sorry, the Belgian Grand Prix that change countries, which comes up on August the 28th. So top class entry. As we ride with Tassan back down off the mountain and coming back into Blanchimont and onto the old circuit. The old circuit is just joining right at this point now. On the Fina Bastos BMW 320i. Basically the uh, touring car championship qualifiers, but just 
give them a little bit longer legs for this weekend. Not quite so highly tuned as they would be for a sprint race at Knock Hill or at Ostreich Ring. Now braking heavily for the bus stop. This chicane, which many still ridicule, but it does cut down the speeds as they come past the new Formula One pits. These cars, of course, using the old pits on the hill. And as has been the case for the last three years, it's a standing start, not a rolling start, for this 24-hour race after Le Mans, the top 24-hour race in Europe. Terry Tassan, the Belgian, former Formula 3 and Formula 2 driver, returning to the pits after a quick lap. Well, the green flag's out. 47 cars on the grid and on pole position. It's Bergstahler, Hoffman and Muller in their Bugatti BMW, Nelson Piquet, Mark Duez and Rivalia, Winkelhock, Sofer and Cox in their BMW, and Philippe Adams, incredible. Fourth fastest in the Opel Quattro. Let's see what happens from behind. Look at that, Winkelhock has just gone straight through the pack. And heading the field. So through has gone Adams. So Bergstahler and Piquet caught nipping there in their Bugatti cars. That's the second row, just went straight through. Look at the heat here. What a hot weekend it was in Spa. Temperatures 32 degrees. This massive crowd enjoying the best in European touring car racing. But it's Winkelhock leading from Adams, who's just got the edge at the moment over Bergstahler on board. The Bugatti BMW there. The rest of the pack streaming out behind. Then the positions all change again. And it's Adams leading. So all around the circuit here. Crowd loving this thing there, Belgian driver. Now watch this, watch these two cars on the second row. That's Winkelhock going for it. Adams going on the grass just, just absolutely catch. The first two cars on the grid there, the Bugatti cars napping. Perhaps they weren't expecting a light to change so suddenly. But look at the lead Winkelhock already has into a Rouge. Now just notice that Eau Rouge now back to its original form without the chicane they used in Formula One. The runoff areas have been widened. Long overdue, many say, particularly since it was 1985 that Stefan Beloff was killed in a Group C race there. It took until the tragic events of him last year to get something done about that, although it had been planned for a long, long time. Well, leading now is Winkelhock, Joe Winkelhock, powering down the hill to the top four cars, five cars indeed, because the other car of Tassan, Muller and Albacetti coming up through the field, but problems already. Oh, very early in the race, a big accident for Pierre Hiver Cotals in his Renault Clear. Now look at this, the car has gone off the track. It is somersaulted over the barriers. It's taken all the safety fencing down. A very, very big accident. Let's have a look at it from a different angle. It will in the moment, but the moment it's Winkelhock leading from Bergstahler and Nelson Piquet. No Adams now comes up, but the safety car's coming out because there's a lot of damage in that accident. Now just watch this Renault Clio. He loses his brakes, he goes off, rolls the car. Once, twice, three times, it hits the, the tire wall, it vaults that, takes down the debris fencing and finishes up in the trees. So even Spa, despite all its safety measures, still cannot contain a car that's in big trouble like that. Now Cortals is Cortals Jr. because he's driving with his father Claude and one of our in-car cameras on board. So let's have a look at it again as the pace car train comes out already. Now here we are, we're on board with Cortals. Now watch this, but particularly watch his helmet. He saw it, the helmet's gone and he's lucky to escape with mild concussion having lost the helmet in that enormous accident. Well, all around the circuit, this battle taken up now between the four BMWs. They're starting to drop the Audi of Philippe Adams. Philippe Adams sharing that car with Terry Moss from New Zealand and Vincent Voss from Belgium. So nothing separating these top four cars at the moment in the field here. It's Bugatti and Schnitzer fighting their own battle as well as fighting Opel. Audi and Honda, that single Honda of Didier de Rodrigues, Patrick Snyers, and Philippe Favre, the Accord. They thought of entering two, but in fact, it's just the beginning of a long-term program. They've already confirmed they're going to be racing in 1996. So as the race goes on to evening, there's the classification. 
very little into at the moment. Those factory cars all mixing it. Look at these beautiful pictures around Spa. Must be the most scenic circuit of all in Europe, perhaps anywhere in the world. The place people go back to time and time again. The drivers love it, the spectators love it. And the Formula One drivers can't wait to get here at the end of August for their Grand Prix here. So still these BMWs just covered by a German pocket handkerchief. Distinctive yellow helmet of Joe Winkelhock leading at the moment and bringing up the back of the four at the moment. Derry Tassan and Ivan Muller in the car there sharing. So in between them, Nelson Piquet and Alex Bergstahler. Well, early pit stops already. This is more like a sprint race now. The pace car's gone again. There's the Audi of Adams, just in the background there. Then the Opal's coming up, and the Honda's still well up with them. This is great racing as Vincott loses out. Oh, it's going through Alex Bergstahler there. It's Philippe Adams, still doing a great job. In the big Audi, the four-wheel drive car. Giving away weight, of course, and right behind him. Oh, trying to go inside as they go down the mountain there. That's Didier Daridiguez in the Honda Accord. And hanging on to them, Coudini, Hellery, and Volker Strychek in one of the Opel Vectras. Coudini, of course, a regular French Opel driver in their championship. So is Eric Hellery, the man who won Le Mans for Peugeot in 1993, then changed to Opel. And Volker Strychek, a familiar course from the DTM. Look at this, still nothing in it. Those four BMWs climbing all over each other, changing position every two minutes around the circuit. Opel, Honda and Audi all battling it out. Oh, through goes Coudini, a nice move there on the inside of Philippe Adams. And Didier de Ridigue is poised to take that place back again in the Honda. So this is real motorsport here at Spa, but they can't keep this up for 24 hours, surely. Diving down the hill through Lecom. But Winkelhock's back in front at the moment. There he is in the number eight, Fina Bastos, Schnitzer, BMW 320i, with the rest of the field tagging on. There's classification. Let's take a short break, come back and rejoin the Spa 24 hours in just a moment. Well, in this great battle raging in the Spa 24 hours over the weekend, these four BMWs now passing back markers as they head for the first pit stops. It's now 5.30 in the evening, the shadows are getting longer and longer. Orders changed again up the front. No team orders between the Bugatti and Schnitzer teams. And behind the Opel Vectra of Alan Cudini right up there amongst them. Now he's caught up a lot over the last 20 minutes and he in fact is looking to take third place as the BMWs start to head for the first of their pit stops. Cudini, very experienced driver of course in ice racing and in the French Super Tourism. Here at the wheel of the Team Opel France entry, the other one put in as Team Opel Belgium. Alex Bergstahler, very tall driver, very noticeable when he's in the car. Coudini in third, having passed. PK. First pit stop's coming up now. Waiting for the number seven car to come in of Tassan, Muller and Albacetti. There is Terry Tassan. Man who's won this race. In he comes, heading into the pits. Drops out of fourth place. This is one of the Schnitzer cars, remember. Comes down to put the car into the care of team manager Charlie Lamb. Out goes Tassan, in goes Ivan Muller. Man who's shining so well in the French Touring Car Championship. Cars 
tended, the driver strapped in, wheels changed. Then once all that's done, they can refuel, take on a full tank for the next fuel stint. Schnitzer crew, of course, well experienced here. Oh, there's a problem with the uh, fuel, it's sprayed everywhere. Oh, there's a fire, there's an enormous fire. Oh, Ivan Muller's out of the car in double quick time. Well, that was an enormous fun. It reminds everyone of 1992 when the Nissan of Anders Olufsen, which was in the next door pit to Schnitzer BMW, went up in flames. Charlie Lamb was involved in that fire too. Here come the fire crew. I think the team have got out already. It's chaos in the pits at the moment. Well, let's have a look at it again, see what happened. We saw that fuel spraying everywhere. As the mechanic took the nozzle off, the valve didn't close. Now, Charlie Lamb there in the red, see, he went to try and help. Suddenly the flames went up, Muller gets out in a hurry. But already the extinguishers working, and this was a notable in 1992. That's how brave and efficient the Spa fire marshals were, getting the Nissan fire out, they do the same. Here, look at Charlie Lamb there in the red shirt, no protection. So the second time this has happened in three years, and Amazing, as we said, happening in neighbouring pits. It was Nissan in 93, Schnitzer BMW this time, but their race is surely over. Terry Tassan. Well, the fuel valve just stuck. There's nothing we could do. It sprayed everywhere. It's catastrophic for us because we were in fourth place at the time and we were just closing up. I think we were the fastest of the BMWs. Vous avez eu le réflexe de sortir en une fraction de seconde. Bah, j'avais pas envie de rester dedans. Well, I think we can get the normal. car fixed. He says it's uh, too much damage. Well, Joe Vinkohol now coming towards his pit stop in the number eight car. He's showing us Steve Soper and Peter Cox of Holland. Steve Soper, man, has won this race, of course. Last one it in 1992. Ninety-three was the last time that Schnitzer was here. So everyone watching with trepidation this refueling operation. Winkelhock telling Sopa what track conditions are like. Straps him in. Steve will take the car back out into the race. Well, no problems this time. You can see on the ground there all the damage from that fire. So. Soper going out of the pits, as in comes the number one car of Nelson Piquet. Piquet out and Mark Duez about to hand over Piquet's distinctive helmet there. The Brazilian Formula One driver. Giving the car to the Belgian national rally champion, an endurance racer. Oh, there's a problem though. This is Cudini, Hillary, he's stopped. Gearbox problems, that's Eric Hillary there walking away. So, gearbox problems putting that Opel France car out. So, big blow for Opel this early in the race. These cars, these vectors are expected to have the legs of the BMWs. Out goes Mark Duez, again a very tall driver. But look at that slipping and sliding on all the extinguisher and spilt fuel from that fire. Duez, the man who is really at home here, he won here in Group C days, driving through Korea Kos. C2, knows this circuit better than anyone, lives just down the road at Verrier. Oh, and this is Satoru Yamaguchi in a Toyota Corolla. He goes off at Radion halfway up the hill. This is all the new work that's been done for the Grand Prix. He goes into the tire wall. It's a big, big accident in the number 18 Toyota. And their race is over. Look at that. He lost the wheel, we saw it as he came up the hill. Wasn't his fault, it all came at the wrong time, in the wrong place. The fastest hill on the circuit, the feared Radion. When in comes the number one BMW. Later in the race, pit stops coming thick and fast now. Nelson Piquet takes over again. This is just after Duet set the fastest lap so far, a record lap. At Two minutes at 35.66. So the pace absolutely frantic here 
on the Saturday evening of the Spa 24 hours. Charlie Lamb there, shutting the door, hands slightly burned. Well, there's a problem though, or is there a problem? No, it's our helicopter picking up the pit stop. It looked like the car was stopped in the country. So PK taking the number one car, the car that's on the front row of the grid, the car which he's sharing with Duez and Revalia, back out into the race. Roberto Revalia, of course, one of the most experienced of all touring car drivers, and who won the 1987 World Touring Car Championship and the 1988 European Touring Car Championship. He was Italian champion in 90 and 91. As we pick up, Finko Sopa, Cox car driven by Steve Soper at the moment. Oh, some very, very late braking there. That's Nelson Piquet just giving himself a brake test going into Lecom at the top of the mountain. He's still going like a train. The Opel Vectra of Eric van der Poel. Tiber. and Omrul. So this race coming a mere four or five weeks after the Nürburgring 24 hours. And here is one of the stars of the show. This is the Peugeot 806 People Carrier. It's an incredible vehicle with uh, this 260 horsepower qualifying on the sixth row. That was something. This is Peugeot's answer to the Ford Transit Supervan and, of course, to the Renault Espace Formula One. So all taken in very good nature as we see night falling now here at Spa. Mark Dewey is waiting for his car to come in. This car leading at the moment, in fact. So Dewey's having gone ahead of Bergsteiler, Vinkerhock, Van der Poel and Adams in fifth. Two laps back, all the others on the same lap. And Didier de Radiguez in sixth place, three laps down. Such is the pace after five hours of racing. Mark Dewey, man, very used to racing here at night. Goes back out into the race. It was uh, very good. I had one Rebellion. problem uh, with one slow car here. But uh, the car still was okay. I was thinking to, uh, maybe to have a punch. Eh? But the, the car was okay and no problem at all. So Roberto Valia taking his ease after another determined stint. Minkelhoff comes in, hands a car over to Britain, Steve Soper. Splits the team efficiently, getting the car back out. Okay, because we had one pit stop more, because we had uh, a problem with uh, flat spot tire. So now we have to fight to to keep in front of the Pigazzi, the car of Pigazzi. And so at the moment, it's I think it's easier than in the day, in the cold weather. It's much easier to to try hard and to to drive consistent uh, laps. Well, then it's time for the pit stops for the Audis. As we see some of the action around the circuit, in comes the Adams Moss Vos car. Followed quickly by the Abt Haug Kramer car. Snowbeck run cars run by the same team that runs in the French Super Tourism. Pointers ever way, saying, well, problem. yes, it seems uh, to be going well now. Uh, it's uh, very pleased with the Opel, it's over uh, the Audi, it's going, uh, going very well indeed. As in comes. The number nine car, Berg, Stahler, Hoffman and Muller, they've got a problem. For the last 
half an hour more or less an engine problem. It looks like there's a problem with the camshaft. So it's finished. Unfortunately, it's finished. Yes. You, you cannot change the the engine. No, it's no 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 way. Not possible. Not allowed. Also. So Ingo Hoffman telling us it's all over for the number nine car out of the race after a great performance early on. But problems for the Peugeot as well. <laughs> Philippe Verilen uh, telling us, well, we had all sorts of problems. An oil pump broke earlier on, but we continued after fixing it. Then the suspension broke, but then it's been overheating for the last uh, half hour. And finally, he said, uh, well, the engine just stopped. It's getting tighter and tighter. Came into the bus stop and uh, just suddenly stopped. So seized. That's it. It's all over. Well, problems here for the one of the Audis. We've got problems fitting one of the wheels back on and lose 12 minutes. Apparemment, ils ont changé la boîte de vitesse et la transmission. Et ils, ont, ils ont construit carrément une nouvelle voiture. Quel est l'état d'esprit quand on repart dans ces conditions-là bah, Je crois que c'est ramener la voiture à l'arrivée. Well, Van de Poel telling us they had problems getting the wheels on because uh, there's some fault with the transmission. Something's out of line, but they get it all back on. It has cost them those 12 minutes, though. On remonte doucement, donc c'est bon. La voiture va très très bien. This is Didier de Rigues telling us about their progress in the Honda. They're going extremely well indeed. Running in fifth place overall at the moment in the Little Accord. De Rodriguez says uh, it's really going well. I'm really enjoying this. Mark Douai, he's another man who's thoroughly enjoying it as well. Still in the lead after 10 hours, just ahead of Winkelhock. Well, we're trying to keep the lead, it's very close. We have uh, only one second over the... Um, over the Schnitzer car, Winkelhock, he told us. Nelson Piquet. Still one of the most popular men in motorsport. For me, it's very difficult to drive in the, in the, in the dark. You know, I'm, I'm not driving every month, I drive once a year, but um, everything is going all right. The car is good, continue very strong, no problem at all. And why did you take the, the drive for, uh, for the night? Well, we have to divide between, there's only three drivers, huh? Uh, everybody, everybody do 45 laps and uh, we have to, we have to go. A man still enjoying his motor racing as the darkness really closes in. <laughs> over the Arden. But for the rest, the racing has to go on. Fighting continues up on the track between the BMWs, Audis, and of course the Opals. Dawn's coming, pit stop now for the Honda. We took the chance after us to talk. The Belgian rally champion Patrick Schneier, the man who's normally racing on gravel rather than tarmac. Yes, it was hard, especially at the end, because the last lap, the pneus were really... But we had some good, uh, good drives. Didier has done a great job. I can't believe a motorcycle guy can come and do so well. It's all going well. The car is absolutely perfect. No problems at all. Oui, oui, on, nous sommes un peu en retard avec les, les, les BM. Mais well, we're going to chase, going to push hard. Honda Maybe we can catch these cars ahead of us, the BMWs. Let's see how it goes. Well, problems for the number one car. Revali has had a collision with the Peugeot diesel running in the race. And Gabriele uh, Raffanelli, boss of Bugatti, is not happy. We explained there was a collision in the dark. The valley turned into a corner. The diesel of Vandevar was doing the same thing and they somehow managed to collide. The only diesel car incidentally in the race, it's a 306 diesel running in the diesel class. 
comprends pas. J'étais dans ma Where's maison. Where's one of those things? Says Vandevar. Uh, said. Bon, uh, I was driving at my maximum speed. I turned in and un peu optimiste there aussi en se disant que j'allais choper tous les deux avant le Rédillon. Avec Revalia, comme nous avons entré au Rédillon. Et ce n'était pas possible, parce que de toute façon, si même... Je ne suis pas très heureux, il a essayé de passer par moi dans un endroit impossible. Je connais tous les deux là-derrière. Ça pourrait changer la forme de la race, on va voir dans un moment après qu'on prenne un break. La dawn est maintenant brûlée sur les Ardennes Mountains de Southern Belgium, et il y a le ordre de race à ce moment. So Winkerhock, Soper and Cox looking fairly secure at the moment, a nine lap lead over the delayed car of Piquet, Douai and Revalia after that collision just before dawn with a Peugeot diesel runner. Cars all around the track at the moment abandoned, 47 starters. We have already lost 20 cars during this very, very hard race. Following our race leader down the hill, Peter Cox doing his job. Dutch driver sharing with Britain's Steve Soper and Germany's Joe Winkelhock. Comes in to hand the car over. Two smoking Joe. Car going like a train. 17 times BMW has won this race. And four times it's been won by Schnitzer. So they're looking for a fifth. BMW looking for an 18th. Again, this worry over the fuel is that one mistake. No one wants it to be repeated again. Here's Charlie Lamb. Now look at his hands bandaged up after trying to fight that fire. But still doing his job, continuing on through the longest night of the year at Spa. Out goes Winklehock, back into the race. In the car, which now has a lead of, we said, nine laps. Over the second place, Revalia Piquet, Douai's car. Delayed in that collision. Third at the moment. After almost 20 hours of rail, well, 15 hours in fact, is up. Van der Poel in third, 13 laps back in the Audi, then the Audi Quattro of Abt, Haug, and Kramer in fourth place. Here indeed is that car. Fincourt closing up on the other Audi of Philippe Adams. Oh, there's problems though for Opel. Well, they're having trouble starting the engine. This is Van der Poel. What sort of problem have they got? Well, the car eventually gets going, goes out. Has to stop at the line. Oh, and it stalls again. The engine refuses to start. Looks like the end of the road for the Team Opel Belgium entry. We've already lost the other car, the Team Opel France car. So Opel's 24 hours comes to an end. Or does it? No, they get out again. Back into the race, but there's a lot more stops to go yet. We're still out front. Joe Vinkhoff pushing on. The Schnitzer car still ahead of the Bugatti car of Revalia, Piquet and Duez. Van der Poel third at that moment, 18 laps behind. In fact, he still is 18 laps behind because the cars rejoined. Didier de Rodriguez and Co. in the Honda. That's a great job by them in fourth place. 18 laps back. Then the Opal's back in again. And at 1.30 in the afternoon, as you can hear, it's gone quiet. The car is pushed away quietly into the garage. It's all over after a great effort by the three Belgians. So at least BMW. One, two at the moment. And it also means that the Honda Accord is now up into third place. Well, this is an incredible first outing for the Accord. That's the first year, as you heard, of a three-year program. And they're doing a great job in this little Japanese car. Rodriguez, Patrick Snyers, and Pascal Favre. Well, 
last pit stop for the leading car. This is always the most anxious time now. The closing hours, closing hour of the Spa 24 hours, 48 editions of it. Let's just have a look down the order, see what's happening amongst the, the British crews. Well, amongst the other British runners, Ian Kahn, racing a Dirk Scheusman and Massimo Kimoto in their Opel Vectra, they qualified 17th. And at the moment, they're an amazing... Twelfth overall is the Honda Civic of Bill Stilwell from Southend. The Thalidomide driver sharing his car with Elliot and Bailey. They've worked their way up into 12th place. Now this car leads the British Touring 2000 Championship. They're running in Group N. With the Honda Civic well up in the running. Oh, there's a problem here now. This is the Accord. It's got a lot of smoke coming out. But they're continuing because there's not that far to go to the flag now. In fact, everyone's starting to slow down a little bit. Let's have another look. Yeah, definitely a serious puff of smoke coming out of the back there. They're already 28 laps down on that smoke. In fact, coming off that rear wheel, it's not an engine, it's coming off a rear wheel. So they head to the pits, change tyres and get back in out. A worrying moment there. Just 30 minutes before the end of the race. But by this time, the abandonments have mounted up the 47 starters just 26 still running so 31 cars lost on the way over the last 23 and a half hours pick up the leaders again Bastos BMW the Schnitzer car heading for what looks like Schnitzer's fifth victory here in the Spa 24 hours Behind them the number one car, but there's some nine laps between them. There they are, first and second, running together at the moment. From rival teams. The lead car from Schnitzer. This car, the number one car, lying in second place from Bugatti. Oh, stopping on the end of the circuit, Philippe Adams. So Adams comes to halt on the circuit in the Audi Quattro shared with Moss and Voss. We don't know what the problem is yet, but in the dying moments of the race. Well, it's a problem with the engine, we then found out. Ten minutes before the finish of the race. He will still be classified though in seventh place. They've done enough laps, although those are 64 down on the leading car. It's the number three Audi was in fourth place at that time. Haug, Abt and Kramer. And in fact, they keep fourth place. Oh, it's a dying moments of the race now. And just look at this, Joe Winkle, Charlie Lamb on the pit wall with Peter Cox, looking very, very concerned as the minutes tick away right at the end of the race. And with the lap advantage I have now, nine laps over the Bugatti car, they can even afford to stop on the circuit. They've still won the race. Steve Soper waving as he goes around the circuit. Coming up to the end now. And they have covered 
3,000, well they will have covered 3,612 kilometers, 518 laps of spa during the 24 hours at an average speed of 150.5 kilometers per hour. That gives BMW its 18th victory as we said and gives Charlie Lamb's Schnitzer team its fifth victory, the last one being in 92, they lost in 93 in a big fight against Bugatti. So now the scales are balanced again. Through the bus stop for the last time, past the Formula One pits, up to La Source. And all they've got to do is go down the hill. It's going to be a BMW photo finish. There they are together. Team rivalry forgotten at this moment because they are both BMWs from Munich. Another great victory for the German mark. Down the hill they come, the checkered flag's ready. And in front of 80,000 spectators, the Spa, 24 hours finishes in third place. Didier de Rudiges, Rudiges, Patrick Snyers, and Fabri in the Honda Accord, so a great finish for Honda. Then the Quattro of Haug Abt Kramer, and then the BMW M3 of Hennis Castagna and Schoenbaum, which has almost been missed in all the excitement. Adams and Mossenvoss still classified seventh, just behind the other BMW M3 of Wagenstater, Hennis and Tant. But very sad news for that British Honda Civic. After the race, they finished 12th, but they're disqualified for carrying on board air jacks. It's illegal in Group N in this race, although not in Britain. So great moment for BMW, great moment for Steve Soper, Peter Cox and Joe Winkelhock. Also finishing in 17th position is Daniel Ducoué, the husband, new husband of Princess Stephanie Monaco on his first ever circuit race. 94 laps though behind the winners. It's Driving difficult to say really because I was such a lot of times here in Spa and always I was second and third and now it's the first win together with Swiss Team Schnitzer. It's my fifth year together with Schnitzer and uh, I cannot explain the feeling at the moment. I'm really happy. Thank you. The celebrations for the Honda Cruise as well. Great finish for the Accord and for Didier de Rodriguez. Troisième place qui est vraiment célébrée comme une victoire. Oui, parce que je crois que toute l'équipe a bien mérité. C'est un très émouvant pour nous. Well, it's wonderful for us. I mean, I come to Spa. Pour moi, première pour la Honda. As a bike racer, I finish up third overall behind the BMWs, and that's something. Trying to beat them. It's a huge crowd here at Spa. As the podium celebrations get underway, well, this has been Speed World on Eurosport. Of course, more action from.